there was no need for a judge to tell me. I knew that support and crimes were guilty, they've always been guilty, but they never admitted to their guilt. But like, as Muslims, we believe that their punishment will be in the year after, and as we speak, they are being punished. Of course, we're not witness to that, but this is because of our belief and understanding of how the Almighty works, this is basically how we see it. But again, we are grateful for the, for the reopening part because the judge himself was very sensitive to the circumstances of individuals and of families. And I think he was able to pick up all of these issues and was able to summarize as he did in terms of how he basically viewed it and was able to give an opinion on it. The purpose of this reopened inquest must be to go back and uncover that which had been hidden and to assert that in a constitutional democracy it is very much in the public interest to know the truth. I am mindful of the wound that a family, a religious community, the greater society of South Africa and others around the world have carried for over five decades. Oppression is described in the Quran as a dark covering cloud. The dictates of truth require that we dispel the cloud of oppression that has hovered over this case and to bring the light because with light we know the truth that can begin to be revealed. I read that there is a hadith which reads and I close and I quote and say truth has now arrived and falsehood perished for falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. And this is in the Holy Quran, Bani Israel 1781. The context of this hadith is not for me to comment on. But as a principle, it is noted that when a society starts to live truthfully, the dark clouds of oppression will dissipate. Truth has the quality of rolling back the darkness little by little. We cannot say truth has now arrived, but by dismantling false goods, we can begin to arrive at the truth. And as I stated in my opening remarks at the start of this inquest, begin to restore the balance.